Today, we'll be making an easel and some paintbrushes for the artist that lives in your dollhouse. So join me and see how easy this project really is. Alright, so to start out, we need to cut some 8 inch by 8 inch basswood. I have two pieces that are 6 inches long and one piece that's 5 and 3 fourths of an inch long. We also need a piece it's about two inches long. This one doesn't have to be exactly two inches long, but pretty darn close, right in that neighborhood. So today I'm using my Easy Cutter to do all my cutting. Um, I really like it for cutting things like this. It's just really really handy to have and real easy to use. We also need a piece of skinny stick. This is just a scrap of skinny stick. And I'm just going to make it eh, a little bit longer than two inches. Again, the exact amount isn't really all that critical. For the next step, it's really important that we line these up in order. We're going to take one of our six inch pieces. And I like to put my emery board on the table to do this. And I have a pin vise. It's a, a little hand drilling tool with a very small, this is a 1 32nd of an inch drill bit in it. These are an inexpensive little tool that you can get. Um, get them at craft stores, hobby stores, online, miniature stores of course. Um, you need to drill some holes. And I'm going down approximately an eighth of an inch and centered in this board. Now, I want to line up my five and three quarter inch piece at the top. And one line that tops up on all on these. And I'm drilling right through. I'm lining up a hole all the way through these and you'll see why in a little bit. We need, to, we need to put these together. Now the other six inch piece, we're lining up the tops of all three of these. This one at the top is to be lined up. You can sand off if you need to sand a little bit off the top if they're not perfectly lined up. That's fine. But it's pretty important that your two six inch pieces be the same length, same size so that you're ends line up too at the bottom. Just gonna get this all the way across all the way through. And be careful because these drill bits do snap off pretty easily. They're pretty fragile when they're this small. Finish this hole. There we go. Alright. Those are not really doing any good there. All right, this is just a, a jewelry head pin. I'm running this through the six inch piece, through that hole we just drilled, it's just the six inch piece. Yes. Through the five and a three quarter inch piece. There we go. And through the final six inch piece. Now I've marked up about three inches up from the bottom of this middle piece. And I am going to put a hole in the middle of this piece. I wanted to wait until I had this together so I made sure that it was going front to back. Because this will be what our chain that holds our easel from opening up too far goes through. All right. Now, this little two inch piece, we need to measure over to the middle of this. And once again, we need to drill a hole through the middle and this will be what our chain is attached to on the front. Come on, come through. 
All right. That's all the drilling we need to do. Now you need to keep track of this little piece here. We're going to flop that around the back. And now we need to measure up about three inches. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'm actually going to mark this really lightly on the sides. I'll mark across the front too, but I'm going to mark it on the sides too. That way I can line up my glue. Now we have two clothespins because we need to, to we will need to um, make sure that our joints are clamped. So right below that mark we are going to put a dab of tacky glue on each of those two six inch pieces. These are only going on the six inch pieces. Now, keeping track of where the hole is. The hole is right here. In fact, it might be a good idea to run an eye pin through this just so we don't lose track because this needs to be facing this way. Now, side away from that. We're not going to do anything with the eye pin yet. We'll do that in a little bit. But right now, we just want to make sure we get that hole going the right way. Now, gently pull out, put that super glue on there so that it would hold immediately, but we're also going to clamp. Now, pull out. We want this right underneath that line. And I've got the line on the side so that I can see if I've got this straight. You can do some minor trimming on your sides if you have to, but it's best to get this in the right spot. And clamp. Now, this glue needs to dry. Now we can stand our easel up. So when that glue is dry, I'll come back and show you the next step. The glue is set up enough. It only takes a few minutes when you're using the glue with the super glue and the other glue. I'm going to push this through. Now, at this point in time, we can take this head pin up here and just bend it around the back all the way through and bend it around. And this will prove this will allow our easel to fold up. Now, remember this piece of skinny stick. We need to glue this right there. That will be the little shelf that our artist can put his or her artwork onto. And I'm just going to run a bead of tacky glue. And I know I very seldom run glue right out of the bottle. I am for this because I'm just gluing this little tiny bit. And I actually want a pretty good bead of glue through there. I'm going to put a couple of drops of super glue. Let this have a second. And then put this on, keeping your fingers well away from the super glue. I've had more problems in the last two days with super glue than I think I have in the last year. That whoops, I went too far. Come on, cooperate with me. There we go. Sometimes it helps if you look at it from the front instead of from the top. Okay, now that will need to dry. In the meantime, we need to get a piece of chain that's two inches long. This is just some jewelry chain from the craft store. We are going to take a head pin and we have this hole that we made in the back. Now, I'm not sure this is the exact way that you're supposed to do a loop like this, but this is how I do it. Bending it over to the side, thread the end of my chain on. Now, I have round nose pliers. 
and I am far from an expert, as you can see, arguing with the chain. Um, I am not an expert at making jewelry stuff. I just do enough to get by here. But what I like to do is just roll this around. this off so you can listen to it fly across the room. Bend my chain around the other side so it's out of my way and close my loop. Now we have the chain looped through. chain is attached. Now we do the same thing on this front, being careful not to break your tray off. This is where it gets interesting because you've got the chain in the way. All right. Bring it down. Bring it around. Cut it off. So that it will hold the chain. Trying to put this where I can see it and where the camera can see it. And this is something I'm not very good at, so it makes it. My instinct is to get it right up where I can see it better. There. It might not be the best looking loop, but it works. So now we have an easel. By having the chain on there, it won't fly forward. So now your dolls can work on their artwork on their easel. So let's um, pick up a few of these things, and I'm going to show you a really simple way to make some paint brushes so your doll can paint on that easel. Right, we're making some really simple little paint brushes. We're using these. Um, fancy toothpicks that you get oh like at the Asian market and I I know there's a restaurant chain in some parts of the country called Cracker Bell they usually have them sometimes your craft stores and even dollar stores will have these little cur carved toothpicks And what I've done is I've cut off this very end knob leaving just I get this picked up just the last two now we're going to make some different kinds of paintbrushes. For the first one, I'm just going to sand it off, and we've got a nice round brush. For this one, I am going to take my needle nose pliers, and right below that joint, right where the two like beady shaped pieces come, I'm going to smash really really hard. I want this really flat and I'm going to sand it off. Now I have a nice flat brush. Now a variation on that one. Smash this one also. With this one I'm using my wire cutters and I'm cutting at an angle and sanding. Now your artist has an angled brush. Now one more. This one is kind of fun. Just got a simple pencil sharpener. You'll have to kind of feel, kind of run it through there a few times. And some of these it works on and this one it did not. So I've got another one. kind of gets it started. And some I noticed some of the toothpicks work really well in the pencil sharpener and some don't work at all. So you'll but luckily toothpicks are pretty cheap, even these. So now we've got a pointed end. Now you need a good thick uh, 
acrylic silver paint. And again, we're going to, oops, that's the one I didn't trim. There we are. Now, this top piece, this top do, little indentation, I'm lining that up on the rim of the paint. And what I want is I want my paint. The goal of this step is to paint the, let me show you which part, is to paint this part right here. This will represent your ferrule on your brush. I don't have, oh, yeah, I've got a brush. That's representing this part, the metal part of the paintbrush. So we're just painting. And it's okay to get it down on the bristles because we'll paint them on the next step. And then I'm just sticking them into a piece of foam to dry. Let's get all four of these and then we can go on. I did some earlier. We can go on and um, paint the bristles on these others I did earlier. And then when the paint's dry, I'll show you how these all turned out. But I think they make really cute little paint brushes. It's okay to get it in all the way up like that. Now I did buy some um, other metallic silver paint and I didn't like it. I bought a bottle of this and I'm just not happy with this. Maybe with many, many coats it would do the same, but that old bottle is working so much better. All right. Now I just have some brown paint. This happens to be spice brown, but it could be any brown paint. And now, this time we need to be careful that we don't get up where we want the silver. We are just painting the bristle area. There. See? We'll do this one. And if you get it up there, it's okay. You try and go in with a wet wipe. And so I will finish painting these paint brushes. I'll let the paint dry and then I'll be back. All right, so now that the first brushes I did are completely dry, or not completely dry, mostly dry, I guess I should say, we are going to shorten them. And I like to vary the length a little bit so they're not all the same. And then just cut with my easy cutter or however you cut your toothpicks. Just don't use scissors, it's so dangerous and it ruins your scissors. Just kind of round that off so it's a nice round. And now your doll artist has some paint brushes. Now you could obviously then go back and dip these into colors of paint over the bristle color so you've got, looks like they've been used. But I will finish um, getting these all trimmed up and I'll get some pictures but I hope you enjoyed this week's video I think the uh, easel and paintbrushes are kind of a fun addition to a lot of scenes so I'll talk to you later bye